splendid story about the journey of Nemo, Finding Nemo. And again, this is by Disney Pixar, and it's called Night Games. All right, let's jump right in. Nemo was enjoying the perfect afternoon. He was playing tag with his octopus friend, Pearl. The two friends chased each other from sponge bed to sponge bed. Tag, you're it. Pearl giggled as she tapped Nemo on the back with one of her eight tiny tentacles. Bet you can't catch me. We'll see about that. Nemo said as Pearl jetted away, kicking up a large cloud of sand. Nemo flipped his fins faster to chase Pearl past the edge of the sponge bed. He was just about to tag her when he spotted something tall and wide up ahead. What is that? He shouted, pointing his fins over Pearl's head. What's what? Pearl asked. Come on, Nemo said. Let's go check it out. <gasps> Nemo swam towards the looming object. It seemed to wave at them in the gentle current. Well, wait for me, Pearl called out. Getting closer, Nemo Whoa! yelled with excitement. It was a huge seaweed bed. The bed was a giant maze of green and red seaweed. Some spots were almost too dense to swim through, while others formed small pockets of open space. Pearl and Nemo have never seen it before. This looks like the perfect hide and seek spot, Nemo said to Pearl. Wanna play? Pearl looked around nervously. The sea had started to turn dark. I would love to, Nemo. But I think we should head home. It's getting late, and both of our dads will be wondering where we are. Do you guys know what time it is? Practical principle time. Absolutely, yes. It's practical principle time. So what does that mean? Here's where we expand on a problem inside of the story, gaining insight and awareness so we can be emotionally and mentally prepared if we ourselves ever have to face such a challenge in real life. You ready to go? Awesome, let's go. What are we learning today? In this story, we're learning safety consciousness, safety awareness. So in this part of the story, Nemo wanted to investigate an unknown area. Now we have to wear our safety caps. What sign should alert us the same way Pearl receives safety alerts, right? Safety alerts, let's find a couple examples. Safety alerts are feelings that we feel inside of our body. Sometimes something feels strange. Sometimes something doesn't feel right. And other times things can feel completely wrong, right? What do we do? We use our safety caps and we use our good cap to get us out of the situation. Our brains are designed to keep us safe, even if it's a scary place in our house, scary movie, or someone who appears to be scary, right? Yeah, and Pearl did the next best thing. She advised Nemo that it's time to go home because one, dad will be worried, and two, we don't know nothing about this place. This can be a real danger, right? We all know how Nemo likes to be brave. Is bravery the same as having no experience whatsoever and then willingly walking into danger? No, it's not. We should be brave only when we have to be brave save someone, to avoid bad, to turn away from someone who don't understand safety. That's bravery too. Sometimes rejecting something is bravery also. It's bravery because the character say, hey, I'm not going down that path you're going. Nemo is not a bad fish. He's actually a good fish. But sometimes good fish, good people can still make an inexperienced wrong choices. 
right? So in this case, Pearl did the next best thing. She said, Nemo, it's time to go home. But today, Nemo and Pearl could be in physical danger. So it's important that we do the next best thing, guys. Head home, communicate to a responsible caregiver, parent, teacher, or police officer. You could be saving yourself and others. Remember to enjoy clean friendship, but always wear your safety cap. All right, let's get back to the story. Nemo realized Pearl was right. It was time to go home for the night. When Nemo got back to his sea anemone, his father was waiting. They had dinner, and Nemo told him all about his afternoon playing with Pearl and finding the seaweed bed. That sounds like a nice place, Marlin told his son. But now it's time for bed. Aw, oh, come on, Dad, Nemo protested. Can't I just stay up a little bit longer? Merlin shook his head. Try to get some sleep, son. Nemo settled into his bed and closed his eyes. He told himself a long bedtime story. He thought about boring things like math class. Four plus two is eight. Six times 11 is 66. <sighs> he even counted dolphins. One dolphin, two dolphin, three dolphin, but he still wasn't sleepy. Finally, Nemo got up and swam to his father. Dad, I can't fall asleep. I've tried, but I just can't. So, so I was thinking, Marlon looked up at his son. Thinking, you say? He replied, trying not to smile. He had a pretty good idea what Nemo had been thinking. What exactly were you thinking, son? He asked anyway. I think you and I should go to the seaweed bed now. That way you'll know it's safe and I can go there tomorrow and play with my friends. I promise when we get back, I'll go right to bed, please. Nemo begged. Merlin looked at his son's hopeful face. Seeing the seaweed bed for himself did seem like a good idea. All right, he said finally. Let's go take a look at this new find of yours. Yes, Nemo shouted, flipping over in excitement. Let's go! As Marling and Nemo swam through the reef, Nemo realized he was glad to have his father with him. Everything seemed scarier in the dark. Squinting, Nemo looked for the seaweed bed. But in the dark, it was nearly impossible to see anything. Son, Marlin began, are you sure the bed is out this far? Nemo not. It is. I know it is. I just wish we could see a little bit better. <sighs> Nemo was just about to give up when he saw a light in a distance. The speck drew closer and closer growing brighter and brighter until it lit up the water all around Nemo and Marlin. In the middle of the light was the strangest fish Nemo had ever seen. <gasps> what is that? The new fish had giant lights under her eyes. Hi, I'm, I'm Nemo. Nemo stammered, amazed. Hi, the other fish said in a friendly sing-song. I'm Lumen. It's nice to meet you, Lumen, Marlin said. I'm Nemo's dad. How come we never seen you before? Lumen fluttered around, causing her light to waver and flicker. My family and I are nocturnal, she said. We swim and play at night while everyone else is asleep. Dad and I are being night turtles too, Nemo said. We're looking for this big seaweed bed I found this afternoon. Do you know where it is? Yes, I do, Lumen said. That's where I live. Follow me. Lumen led Nemo and Merlin to the seaweed bed. Do you want to play a game? She asked. Yeah, Nemo shouted. 
can we, Dad, please? Lumen led Nemo and Marlin to the seaweed bed. Do you want to play a game? She asked. Yeah, Nemo shouted. Can we, Dad, please? Just stay out here in the open, he said. I'm going to go have a look around. While the kids play, Marlin explored the seaweed bed to make sure it was safe. Behind him, he could hear his son counting down from one. Don't peek! Marlin heard Lumen shout it as she swam off to find a good hiding place. Marlin pushed through the maze of thick green and red strands, swimming further and further into the seaweed bed. Suddenly, he realized how dark and quiet it had become. He could no longer hear Nemo or see Lumen's light. Marlin spun around. He had no idea where he was. All he could see was seaweed. He was lost. Nemo, he shouted, Nemo, where are you? But there was no answer. Flipping his fins, Marlin tries to find a way out. Just when he was beginning to think he would be stuck in the seaweed bed forever, Marlin spotted a faint light in a distance. Nemo, he called swimming towards it. Is it you? Is it you? Following the light, Marlin made his way through the seaweed. The strands grew farther apart until finally he hit the open water. There, right where he left them, were Nemo and Lumen. Marlin sighed in relief. Oh, Dad, Nemo said excitedly. There you are. We didn't know where you'd gone. Don't you know better than to go swimming all by yourself in the dark? Marlin smiled. I guess I should have followed my own advice. Nemo gave Marlin a hug. I'm just glad we found you, Dad. Together, the two said goodnight to Lumen. Good night, good night, Lumen. As they swam home, Marlin let out a big Yawn. <sighs> Nemo looked at his father. When we get home, I think you should go right to bed, Dad. Nemo said with a teasing look on his eyes. You had more than enough adventure for one day. All right, guys, that was another wonderful story. And I will see you for the next one. Take care. Bye.